In this presentation, I'm going to discuss how you can create voice-narrated PowerPoints uh, to allow your students one additional method to help them understand important course content. What is a voice-narrated PowerPoint? It's basically the same as a traditional PowerPoint that you're accustomed to with text and or images with the addition of a voice narration to assist the audience or the students in understanding the material uh, a little bit deeper. Using this type of instruction allows students one additional means of understanding and retaining important information. If I have a substitute covering for me, I can create a voice narrated PowerPoint in advance and have the substitute instructor play that PowerPoint during the class. This works really well with my hybrid and distance learning students because they can go back and they can play the video as many times as they need or they can pause it and take notes and then replay it again after they're done taking notes. I use this method primarily as a supplemental means of learning or a supplemental means of helping students understand information, not as a primary means of instruction. One of the reasons I use voice narrated PowerPoint as a supplemental tool rather than as a primary learning tool is because I don't want any uh, hearing impaired students to be at a disadvantage for receiving all of the information that all the other students are receiving. So if you wish to use this as a primary means of instruction, I would strongly encourage having a manuscript of your voice narration available for your students. Okay, so let's get started. First, you're going to need a computer with Microsoft Office 2010 or newer. You're going to want to have your PowerPoint file ready to add voice narration to. And you'll want to have either a computer with a built-in microphone or you'll want to have an external headset that you speak into that's plugged into the computer. Personally, I like to use the headset because it tends to provide better sound quality. Okay, to get started, open up your PowerPoint file. If you wish to save an original copy of the PowerPoint without voice narration, you might want to use the Save As command. And also make sure that your microphone is set up and working properly before you begin. Okay, you'll want to select the Slideshow tab from within PowerPoint and then click Record Slideshow. And after you do that, select either Record from Beginning or Record from Current Slide. After you choose either of those two options, this image on screen will appear. You want to make sure that both of these checkboxes are turned on before you press Start Recording. Begin recording by speaking into the microphone. After you finish voice narration for one item on a slide or for one entire slide, press the Enter key or the down arrow to move to the next item. Proceed with this process until you've reached the last slide through your presentation. Press the Escape key when you finish narrating. Don't forget to save your work. And then if you need to go back and edit any information or re-narrate information, go back to that individual slide and then press the Escape key when you're done finished narration for that slide. And of course, don't forget to save your work. After adding voice narration to your PowerPoint, uh, you'll see the slides side by side in kind of a tiled format here. And in the lower right corner of each slide that has voice narration, you'll see a little speaker or audio icon that indicates that there's a, a sound file or voice narration attached to those slides. To begin playing your PowerPoint file from the beginning, simply press the F5 key. To play your PowerPoint from a slide starting other than from the very first slide, move to that slide in PowerPoint, highlight it, and then press the icon circled in blue. I just discovered you can also add video files into your PowerPoint so you can actually play videos in your presentation. Although, please be aware, depending on the file size of the video, it can dramatically increase the file size of your PowerPoint file when inserted. 
Also be aware that PowerPoint will only accept certain video formats, so make sure that the video you insert into your PowerPoint is compatible with Microsoft PowerPoint. Feel free to edit any information at any time in this process, whether that be text information, images, or voice narration for one or more slides in your presentation. Once your voice narrated PowerPoint is finished, you can either play it straight as a PowerPoint file in the classroom, or you can convert it to a video and upload it to the internet. To create a video, simply go to the File tab, and then scroll down, and then choose Save and Send. After you've selected Save and Send, to the right, select Create a Video. To the right of Create a Video, you want to choose the video quality. I recommend choosing Internet and DVD. Then you want to select Use Recorded Timings and Narrations, and then press the Create Video button. After pressing the Create Video button, it will ask you where you wish to save your file. I usually save my video file to the desktop where it's easy to find. Uh, then wait for your video to process. It may take several minutes. It's going to create a WMV file which can be uploaded to the internet or saved on your flash drive. Once you have this file, you can either put it straight in Blackboard or upload it to YouTube, uh, save it on your flash drive, do whatever you like with it. If something is not quite the way you want, you can go back and edit your PowerPoint slides at any time and then just simply reprocess the video to get a new copy or an updated version of your video. To insert screenshots from your computer screen into your PowerPoint presentation, you can use what's called the snipping tool found within Windows. Once you have your video file, you can then create a YouTube account, which takes just a few moments, and then you can upload your video to your YouTube account. After your file is uploaded, it may take several hours for YouTube to index that video. In other words, uh, it might not show up in the results list right away if you were to type a search with the title of your video in the search box. Again, I like to use YouTube because it allows for creating easy mashups in Blackboard Learn. If you look at the image shown on screen here, you can see there's an attached file as a PDF. Those are the written instructions for this assessment. And just beneath it is a thumbnail of the video. The students can click the video and play it right there within Blackboard uh, and download the instructions. Everything is in one nice, convenient location for the students. Creating a mashup in Blackboard with YouTube is really pretty easy. To learn how to do that, you can do a quick Google search, you can do a quick search on YouTube, you can ask a member of our DL staff, or you can contact someone at EmbaNet. The process really is pretty easy. Alternatives to using voice narrated PowerPoint include Camtasia Studio software available from ITS Software Checkout Services, an online program called Screencast-O-Matic that's very easy to learn, very easy to use, and doesn't actually install any software on your computer. And of course you can always use CNM's MPS audio and video production services to create professional looking presentations for your classes. Each of these methods of creating video presentations has pros and cons. I like this method that I'm explaining here because it allows me to easily edit information and reprocess the video without too much difficulty. This is a lot of information to remember at once, so I'm going to send an email with a web link so you can view the video for this presentation in YouTube. And in that email, I will also include a series of web links with separate video tutorials that explain each step in this process in a little bit more information than what I'm explaining to you here today. I just want to say thank you for viewing this presentation, and I wish you the best of luck in creating uh, video presentations for your students to help enhance their understanding of your course content. Once again, thank you for viewing this presentation.